Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jake and I am from Nova Scotia in Halifax. And I'm gonna tell you about my eight year software journey that all started back when I was in university. So I was picking what I wanted to do and I was supposed to play football and go into science. Well, I got injured, missed the combine, and ultimately switched to computer science. I was brand new to the field with no coding experience whatsoever. In my second year of school, I had started working with animation using Blender and had heavy interest in virtual reality. I'd been working on projects on the side for a while in Unity, and eventually circumstances led to the start of my first virtual reality company. We targeted real estate and made renderings, fly-throughs, and VR buildings. This was where I landed my first paid software job. I coded many virtual reality prototypes, including a stereoscopic photo viewer, many other AR experiences, and I was all self-taught in this field. Of course, I was getting extra knowledge from my degree in computer science, but it never really goes into specifics with game development practices. All of this was learned from YouTube. A local university had requested us to make a virtual reality grocery store for product testing. They wanted all interactive products with data points and nice visuals, pretty much the whole package. We had to price it up do weekly meetings, and of course, this was my first time as a designer for a software client. I was also still in school. The software itself was delivered and worked, but it definitely looked like an amateur project under the hood. It used Unreal Engine and mostly blueprints. Following this project, we had a few large software deals fall through and dove mostly into renderings. It was around this time that COVID started to hit and the real estate market was booming so much that we were no longer needed to sell anything. Houses were just selling without renderings, without showing and so this was obviously very bad for our company. My passion for the company was always tech and software, and now we were a render company. I ended up selling my shares and getting a corporate job out of school. While working my software job, I started StreamVamp. StreamVamp was a small venture which revolved around making CGI backgrounds for live streamers to use on their green screens. This was a Twitter-based business and did quite well. After struggling with growing my social media, I eventually cracked the code. The secret was to make free stream rooms for gaming organizations who would share rooms to all their members and ultimately follow me. It was at this point I made another tough decision. Is this what I want to do? Making stream rooms was fun, but I'm a technical person. I can do a lot more than that. I didn't want to have to grind so hard to find new clients. I wanted something that had much higher demand. During my corporate job, I had become very unhappy with it, as it seems most devs do. I found a job that looked promising and ended up getting an interview. The people were nice, it looked like an amazing opportunity, and the interview went fantastic. Until the technical part, I absolutely bombed the coding section. I did not get the job, and I was ultimately devastated. I felt like after all these years of work, how am I doing so poorly in coding? It's at this point I'm going to take an intermission and give a little bit of wisdom to some of you younger devs about what I've learned. If you are a new software dev struggling with coding interviews, I want you to know that doing coding tests is its own skill. It is something you practice specifically. Clever coding questions online, interview questions, these are something that have almost no application in the real world. They are what I consider to be party tricks. Don't expect to do well in them unless you are practicing them. Some people are gifted in this stuff. I am not. Don't feel bad if you aren't either. It's all just practice. Okay, back to the story. After failing this interview terribly, I decided I needed to pick up the slack with my coding skills. I needed something hard in my free time that would give me more confidence. So the one thing that I decided to make was the one thing I thought I couldn't make, which was a multiplayer video game. Cinder Fury is a multiplayer game that started out in March 2021, and learning how to actually do this was very difficult. We had early tester lobbies just to see if you could even get into the same lobby with each other. It did, and it was going pretty well. This was a very exciting time. We were planning a kick starter and all sorts of things, but this didn't last forever. We started losing team members for various reasons, and eventually I became a solo developer on a multiplayer game. Hard would be an understatement. Not having anyone to help solve hard problems was a burden, to say the least. Everything falls on you. Towards the end of the year, I decided I would do whatever it took to find someone to work on the game with, as I felt like I could not progress on my own. I went to Reddit and posted on r slash I need a team. I sifted through a fair bit of responses to my posting as apparently my game looked quite appealing to most people. I found a few people who ended
ended up doing no work and left. And then when I was just about to give up, I found someone named Hafiz. Hafiz is a senior developer from Malaysia and had coded an MMORPG before Classic WoW. This was obviously amazing and seemed too good to be true to me, but he eventually admitted that he wanted to find someone as dedicated to his work as he is, and he thought that I could be that person. And he said that our game had a clear vision, and so he figured he would give it a shot. And we are still working together a year and a half later. It was a life-changing experience finding someone to actually work on something with me. As I mentioned earlier, I hated my corporate software job, and currently in the story, I am still working here. So it has been over a year since I failed the interview and started my game. So a lot has happened since I failed that interview. I decided that with my newfound confidence and experience, it was time to try again and look for another job. So I applied for a number of jobs, had some good interviews, had some bad ones. I didn't let failing the coding section bother me as much as in the back of my mind, I knew that I was capable of making something hard, which was a multiplayer game. And if I did poorly, it wasn't a reflection of my overall skill set, but it was a reflection of my lack of commitment to studying coding problems. I found a job that paid double what my previous one did, and they hired me because of my portfolio. There was no technical interview. Can you believe that? They told me, and I quote, we saw all the work on your portfolio with your company and your game and all your projects. And if you can do that on your own, we figured that you could do great work with us. So that's that. It was a small startup and offered a remote position for one year with options to extend the contract. And so far it has been the best job that I've ever worked. Currently, I'm still working at the startup while working on Cinder Fury, my game, on the side. Our game is set to release next March, and we have plans to run a Kickstarter hopefully this year. I don't regret anything, and this journey has been very difficult so far, but a rewarding one. I've learned a lot of lessons the hard way, and others the easy way. If anyone is out there who is just starting out, please feel free to comment below, and maybe I can share some of my experience with it. If you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you for hearing my story and I hope you might have found it interesting and taken something from it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and of course, wishlist my game on Steam, as it's the absolute best way that you can help an indie developer. Thanks for chatting, and I'll talk to you guys later.